what happens if we break a series or a parallel circuit at various places in the circuit. Let's start off with a series circuit. Previously, we built this circuit. Predict what will happen if we break the circuit in these different ways shown here. So in one, we break the circuit immediately after the positive terminal of the battery. In two, we break it between these two bulbs. In three, we break it between these two bulbs. And in four, we break it just before the negative terminal of the battery. Which bulbs, if any, will shine in each of these four? Four circuits. Pause the movie until you've predicted that yourself. Before we actually do this, let's think about electricity to help us to decide if the prediction is right. So first of all, let us think of electricity like water. You can watch other movies about this to get more detail, but just quickly, we liken the voltage source, the battery, to the pump that pushes the water around the circuit or it pushes the charges around the circuit. And then we have pipes in which the water flows, just as we have wires. Now the part that's relevant to this movie is the tap or the valve in the water circuit, which corresponds to the switch or just a broken section of the electric circuit. Now let's say that we close the tap we close the valve. What that does is it puts an obstruction in the way of the water. It blocks the water. So now even though the pump tries to push the water around, the water cannot move around because it's blocked by the closed tap. Now ask yourself, if we close the tap, the valve, as I've shown here, and the pump carries on trying to push, where will the water move? Let's say the pump is pushing the water in that direction. Which part of this water in the water circuit will be able to move? Remember, filled in everywhere there, we have water. If we have the valve, the tap closed like that, where will water flow? Can you see that none of the water can flow? You might think, oh, the water before the closed tap, but no, no water will flow. Why? Because water is incompressible. And so if it's blocked one point, none of the water can flow anywhere. In a similar way, if we have an open switch or a broken section of the circuit, where will the charges flow? The battery is trying to push the charges, but where will they flow? Now you might think that they can flow here before the switch, just not after, but no, they cannot flow anywhere because charge like water is incompressible. And so if there's a break in the path that all must go along, none in that path can move. This might make it a bit clearer. So here we are comparing a series electric circuit to a marble circuit. So here we have marbles all placed together in a groove. And as you can see, there are no spaces between the marbles. They all touch another marble on either side. And marbles are also incompressible, just like electrons. They cannot be squashed, they cannot be stretched. And then we push just like the battery pushes the electrons. Now, let us say that just like we can open the circuit, break the circuit, we could place something that can stop the marbles moving between two of the marbles like I've shown there. So this can maybe be a piece of wood that we screw down or hammer down into the groove. So the marbles on either side of that cannot move through this stopping point, this division. So now if we push the marbles while that stopping division is in place, which marbles will move? None of the marbles can move. If there's a blockage at one point in the circuit, all the marbles will be stationary because it's impossible for some of these marbles to move while others do not move. That cannot happen because they're all packed so closely and they are incompressible. They have to move all together or not at all. So let's get back to your prediction. In which of these circuits will the bulbs shine? And which bulbs, if any, will shine? Notice how the circuits are broken. So remember, we have already built the circuit. Now we go and we break it at various places. So let's first go close to the positive terminal. We break the circuit. Notice all the bulbs go off. Let's reconnect the circuit. Bulbs come back on. 
Let's go a little further along, break the circuit again, all the bulbs off, let's reconnect, charges flow again, all the bulbs light. Let's break between the first two bulbs, all the bulbs go off. Let's reconnect, all the bulbs on. Let's break between the next two, all the bulbs go off. Reconnect, they all come on. Let's break closer to the negative terminal, all the bulbs go off. Reconnect, break even closer to the negative terminal, all the bulbs off. Reconnect, all the bulbs shine. So let's summarize what we've seen in that simulation by answering these questions. If a series circuit is broken at any point, electric current stops flowing where? Only where the brake is or everywhere in the circuit? I hope you answered everywhere in the circuit. It doesn't matter where you break a series circuit. Current stops flowing everywhere and all the bulbs go out. So what about a parallel circuit? Previously, we built this parallel circuit. And what we're going to do now is we're going to break it at various places and see what that does to the bulbs. Before we do that, though, you need to predict in each of these six variations of that circuit, which bulbs, if any, will shine. So we see in circuits 1 and 2, the break is in the main part of the circuit. In circuit 1, it's just after the positive terminal. So are any of these bulbs going to shine? In circuit 2, it's just before the negative terminal. Are any of these bulbs going to shine? If so, which? And why do you say so? Then in circuits 3, 4, 5, 6, notice that the breaks are always in the branches of the circuit. In circuit 3, you can see it's on the negative side of that third bulb, whereas in circuit 4, it's on the more positive side of that same bulb. So in 3 and 4, will any of the bulbs shine, and if so, which ones? How will 3 compare to 4, and why? And then in circuit 5, we've broken the connection to that middle bulb that's in the parallel section, in the branched section. And in circuit 6, we've broken the connection joining the third bulb in the parallel section to the main part. Which bulbs, if any, are going to shine there? Pause until you've answered this yourself. Now, before we actually get the circuit and break it at different places, let's just think about this using an analogy. So here again, we are thinking about water and pipes. So here we have pipes filled with water and there's pressure shown by these arrows pushing the water from right to left. Now the thing about these pipes is that they are in parallel with one another. What does that mean? There's a branch. Some of the water is going to flow through that top branch to the other side. Some of the water is going to flow through the middle branch and some of the water through the bottom branch, which is similar to what happens in a parallel circuit in the branched section. Let's say we have a tap in that first main part of the circuit and we screw the tap down so that it's blocking that first part of the circuit. Water cannot flow through that section. So if that tap is closed, where will water flow? Can you see water will not be able to flow anywhere? If we then screw that tap up, so that it's not blocking that pipe anymore, water will flow again. If we put that tap into the other side, which is also part of the main circuit, where all the water must flow, and we screw it closed, where will water flow? Again, water will flow nowhere because the part where all the water has to flow is blocked, so none of the water can flow anywhere. But if we have a tap that blocks only one of the branches, can you see now water can still flow through the unblocked branches? Nothing is stopping the water from flowing through the unblocked branches. The water can just not flow through the branch that has the blockage. Now a break in the main part of a parallel circuit, that's like having that tap closed in the main part of the water circuit where all the water has to flow. And that's going to stop current from flowing anywhere in the circuit. Let's check that out. So we open our simulation. Here we have the circuit that we built before. We go and break it in the main part of the circuit near to the positive terminal. All the bulbs go off. The electrons stop flowing everywhere. We reconnect that point and immediately the electrons are flowing again and the bulbs shine. Here's another point in the main part of the circuit. All the bulbs dark. Electrons stop flowing. Reconnect. Electrons flow. Bulbs shine. This side of the main part of the circuit. Break it. All the bulbs stop shining. Reconnect. They all shine again. Also in the main part of the circuit. Break it. All stop. Current stops flowing, bulbs stop shining. Break at another point in the main part, same effect. Reconnect, all shine again, 
current flows again. Let's summarize what we've just seen by answering this question. If the main part of the circuit is broken, electric current stops flowing where? Only where the brake is or everywhere in the circuit? And hopefully you answered everywhere in the circuit. So breaking a parallel circuit in the main part is like breaking a series circuit. Everywhere just stops. Current stops flowing throughout the circuit. All the bulbs stop shining. But what about if we break a parallel circuit in one of its branches? So here circuits 3 to 6 have a broken section in one of the branches. Before we continue, you need to decide which bulbs, if any, are going to shine in each of these cases from 3 to 6. Pause until you've predicted that. Also explain why you say this. So what's important to realize is that a bulb will shine if the current can flow through it and it won't shine if current cannot flow through it. Now in the simulation it's showing the direction of electrons. I'm going to show the direction of conventional flow, but you will get the same prediction no matter which you use. So let's take circuit three. For current to flow, there needs to be a complete path of conducting wires from positive to negative. We can see here is a complete path from positive through that bulb, through that bulb, through that bulb, to negative. So those bulbs are all going to shine. Is that the only possibility? No. Here's another possibility. From positive through this bulb and then through this bulb and into the main part of the circuit through that bulb again and through to negative. So we have these two branches that are complete. These two paths, these two circuits within this parallel circuit that are complete. So those bulbs that have the current flowing through them, they are going to shine. But that third branch, no current will flow through it because that gap is blocking the current from flowing anywhere within that section, within that branch. So that bulb will not shine. What about circuit four? Here we have a complete path from positive through this bulb, through that bulb, through that bulb, and to negative. Similarly, we have a complete path of conducting wires from the positive terminal through this bulb and through this bulb back into the main through that bulb and to the negative terminal. But there is not a complete path that includes the bulb that is in the broken branch. So that bulb will light up, that bulb will light up, so will that bulb and so will that bulb because they are part of complete circuits, but that third bulb will not. What about circuit five? From positive round, we have a complete path through those three bulbs. Is that the only option? No, we also have from positive round a complete path through that bulb and then back into the main and to the negative terminal. So those bulbs will light up, but not the middle bulb. Circuit six, from positive through that bulb and there through that middle branch back into the main part of the circuit through that bulb to the negative terminal. So those three bulbs will definitely light up. Are they the only ones? No. Here's another option from positive through the main part of the circuit and through that bottom branch back into the main part. So all of those bulbs that have a red line through them are going to shine. And those bulbs without a red line through them are not going to shine because they are not part of a complete circuit. So let's check that. We open our simulation where we'd already built this. And now we're going to break, first of all, in that first branch. Notice how that first bulb stop shining but all the others are still shining. If we break that same branch but just on the other side we get the same effect. That bulb stops shining but all the others still shine. Notice if we break this connection only those three bulbs now have a complete circuit through them. It's actually then a series circuit because these two branches are no longer part of complete circuits. They stop being part of the circuit and as you can see current stops flowing through them and they stop shining. Now let's reconnect it so that only the middle branch is disconnected. So the bottom branch is now still part of it. So now we do have a complete circuit through that bottom bulb. So it does shine now. Only the middle one is not part of a complete circuit and so it is dark and the electrons do not move through it. We reconnect 
light and now they all shine. Let's break on the other side. Again, if we break them all like that, then we actually have converted this into a series circuit, only including those three bulbs, because both of these two branches are now excluded from the circuit by being broken there. Let's reconnect the bottom branch, but just break away the middle branch. And now we see again that only that middle bulb does not shine. The charges don't flow through that middle bulb but charge does flow through the other two branches and they do shine. Notice though they shine dimmer than the bulbs that are in the main part of the circuit because all the charges flow through the main part of the circuit whereas only some of them flow through each of the branches. We reconnect. Now all of the bulbs are shining. Let's break the bottom branch so the bottom bulb stops shining current stops flowing through it. Let's summarize what we learned in that simulation by answering this question. If a branch is broken, electric current stops flowing where? Only where the break is or everywhere in the circuit? And I hope you said only where the break is. Like here, this branch is broken, current doesn't flow there, that bulb doesn't shine. Everywhere else, current continues to flow and the bulbs that are in those paths continue to shine. So let's recap, what have we seen? Series circuits, anywhere you break it, that breaks everywhere in the circuit. Break a series circuit at one point, current stops flowing everywhere. All the bulbs stop shining. Parallel, it depends. If you break it in the main part of the circuit, same effect as with series. Break it in one part of the main circuit, everywhere the current stops, all the bulbs stop shining. But break it in a branch and only that branch stops shining. The current only stops in that branch, in the whole of that branch, but not in other branches.